Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Sasquatch Trail Runners Run Venture Facebook Live series. Okay. My Hello, everyone. name is, Welcome oh, hold on. Trail Runners Run Venture Facebook Live there we go. Sorry, we're gonna have a little uh, echo back on that feedback. So let me start again. My name is Kim Levinsky. I'm the owner and race director for Sasquatch Trail Runners in New Jersey. Tonight, we're going to be interviewing the wonderful Grace Langhine, ultra runner extraordinaire. Uh, before we jump into the interview, I'm going to share a few updates with you on what is happening in the world of Sasquatch Trail Running. So next up for us is our trail party called Run, Hike, Eat. And that is an event at Hackle State Park in Chester, New Jersey. We are meeting on Saturday, October 23rd at 9 a.m. at the trailhead. So we've done this now the last couple of years. It's super, super fun. This is a go your own pace, run, hike your own route type of an event. We're all gonna meet at the trailhead at nine and then go explore the park at Hackle Barney. So come out and meet other runners and hikers on the trail and enjoy the trail beauty. It's going to be peak foliage uh, that weekend. And uh, after that, we're going to head over to the Hackle Barney Cider Mill to enjoy some amazing apple cider donuts. So this is a free event, no cost to come. It's definitely family friendly. Every year we have a lot of families come out with their kids. And this is most definitely newbie friendly, just like all of our events. So pace does not matter. Don't let that bother you at all. All pages, all ages and paces are always welcome at our trail parties. So after that, the next race that we have is the last Squatch Standing. That is on October 30th at the South Mountain Reservation in West Orange, New Jersey. So this puts a squatchy twist on the Backyard Ultra, which we just had a couple of weeks ago for this event. Runners have to complete a one mile loop in the allotted time or they get eliminated. So time comes off of the clock every loop. So this is actually a test of endurance and speed because every mile that goes by time comes off of the clock and we keep going until there's only one runner left. So you can register for that race on ultrasignup.com and we will be back at the South Mountain Reservation for the race after that in November, which is Thanksgiving weekend on November 27th. That is for our annual Squatchy Leftovers race. So this year we've added a couple of distances. In the past, we've only had 5K, 10K. This year we are adding a 25K and a 50K. This has been requested by multiple people. And we had a special request from our friend, Trishal Churns, who is an ultra running legend in our community. So he will be completing his, I think it's his 300th, 400th ultra marathon and he asked if he could do it at a sasquatch event which we were just so excited about to have that happen so we added the 50k we are um, affectionately calling it the maple leaf 50k because uh, trishal is from canada so we hope that you can join us for that again that's on november 27th at the south mountain reservation and then our last event for 2021 is the Squatchy Yanda Full Moon Ugly Sweater Night Race. So this race is back after a year hiatus. We weren't able to do it last year. Um, you can come out to Weiwei Yanda State Park in Hewitt, New Jersey on December 18th, and you can sign up to Squatch four or eight miles. And this is a night race. So this is under the stars, and it just so happens that night is a full moon. So the stars literally line for us. We're going to be running under the full moon at Weiwei Yanda. And then you can stick around afterwards to roast some marshmallows around the bonfire. And it is always a, we'll say it's always a memorable evening at Weiwei Yanda. There's always some sort of crazy weather pattern that comes in. So be warned. It's probably going to be nuts, but you don't want to miss it. Um, that race is now live on ultrasignup.com. So you can learn more about the rest of our events. We've got all of our 2022 dates up on our calendar. That's on Sasquad Trail Running. Dot com, and we've also loaded them onto ultrasignup.com. Some of the registration links don't open until uh, the first of the year, but you can check them out and add them to your watch list so you get the alerts. So, okay, the reason you're all here, Grace Langhine. Welcome, Grace. I think she's going to pop back on the screen here. So, Grace, Grace, I met, yeah. I've known about Grace for um, years, but I didn't meet her officially in person until this past. February, I guess it was, we were both at the duck hundred K, uh, for me, that's like the race that shall not be named. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. It was I'm, a rough I, night. It was a rough night. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 
we'll talk about that during the interview. Really, we can jump into that later. Uh, but that's where I officially met, met Grace in person. I've known about Grace by her reputation. She is um, she's just one of those names in the trail running community that is a positive force, and she's done a lot of really awesome things in our sport. So I'm going to give you a quick background on Grace before we jump into the interview. So Grace is out in Pennsylvania. She leads a local chapter of Trail Sisters, which if you're not familiar with that group, I would encourage you to get online. You can, I think their website is just trailsisters.com. If not, just Google them. And um, they do a fantastic job of getting more women out um, onto the trails. And there's local chapters all around the country. Uh, They also do some really cool trail retreats, women retreats as well. So uh, Grace is a local leader for one of those chapters out where she lives. She does a little bit of race directing for a road event and then also a fat ass trail series, one of which involves some fireball shots. So maybe we can chat about that as well. Um, She runs a trail running camp for women. She's a running coach, works with endurance athletes. And uh, Grace is a self-proclaimed back of the pack runner, which I personally identify with as well. And I'm excited to talk with her about that tonight. And um, again, a lot of overlaps here. She is really passionate about getting more women out on the trail, which you know that you guys know I am as well. And that's a pillar stone at Sasquad Trail Running. So uh, she's also a self-proclaimed trail running nerd, follows all things trail running with the big names <laughs> in the sport, with athletes and coaches. And um, lastly, she works full time for Turkey Hill, hashtag ice cream in the human resources department. So we have a lot of really fun rabbit holes to go down here tonight. So Grace, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me. It'll be fun. This is good. This is good. So I see you're sporting your Run PA hoodie right now. Yeah. Run PA hoodie. Yeah. What's the story with that for people who don't know? I'm familiar, (laughs) but some other folks might not know. At hashtag run PA, they, um, awesome, awesome group. Um, and, uh, Jason Logue, I think, um, is running it now. He race tracks a couple of races down here, um, in Pennsylvania and sells awesome gear and is also a trail runner, which is just, that's great to have some Pennsylvania running gear, um, by a company owned by a trail runner. And that's fine. And as well as my idiot runner gear yes. that I have. <laughs> from the amazing uh, Becky and Eric Kosak. Um, so I got to sport the idiot runner gear as well as my run PA gear. Um, and, and Eric coaches me as well. And I'm madly in love with Becky. So love it. That's so fun. That's so fun. You get to represent all the gear right there. Uh, let's, have, let's have the fun of, of our sport is the gear, you know, mm-hmm. and white claw. White claw. <laughs> All about the swag and the white claw. (laughs) Um, Well, Grace, why don't we jump into your whole running story? So I think that's a good starting point for us. We can kind of springboard off of that down all these really fun rabbit holes. But we love to ask our guests when they come on, you know, just start out with your running story. Like, how did you get into running? When did the trail running start? When was the the deep dive into ultra running that that whole thing? So let you take it away here. Yeah. Oh man, that's a, that's always a fun question. Um, <clears throat> I say there's two kinds of trail runners, right? There's trail runners who used to be road runners, and there's mm-hmm. trail runners who used to be hikers. Yes. <laughs> and they, yes. they or they still do those things, right? But there's <laughs> kind of two ways that you get to it. Most people don't start out with trail running, and I'm one of those who started with hiking. I've been a hiker for a long, long time. I love being out in the woods. That's my happy place. And I didn't start running until about seven years ago. <clears throat> seven years ago, I quit smoking. And woo, very awesome. well, about, about eight years ago, I, I quit smoking. And in kind of my mantra is like, whatever it takes to quit. And I remember my, my first day without a cigarette. And my, one of my employees was like, hey, Grace, do you want some of this cake? And it was a giant piece of chocolate cake. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so I, I ate whatever I needed to. And then I went through that whole, well, I'll lose weight by running, right? And I, mm-hmm. who cares? But um, but I I joined in a five, I'm gonna do a 5K and I'm praying for it and I'm gonna lose some weight. And I did this 5K in my neighborhood and I had to walk parts of it. It was like a 37 minute 5K. I'm so proud of myself. Awesome. I was just like, yes. 
this is awesome. And then, so I did kind of the 5k thing. And then I did my first five miler seven years ago, just about to the date. <clears throat> and I was at a race, I was at a 5k race. And I, <laughs> I remember it was, um, I drove like an hour away and it was in an industrial park okay. and, and you did like three loops around this industrial park and you end up at a brewery. And I was kind of like, eh, all right. And fun fact, there was this woman <laughs> who I was trying to pass and she had pants on with pictures of cats on them. And yes. so I was trying to pass cat pant lady. Yes. And, and I was like, this, this can't be all there is to running is just trying to pass cat pant lady <laughs> and then have a beer for three laps in an industrial park. And Grace, uh, that was me. Did you know that? <laughs> that was me. I couldn't make it. I didn't pass you. <laughs> and and so at this, it was one of the pretzel city sports races, which they, mm. well, I think they were just timing it. I don't think it was one of their races, but they bring flyers there. And, and there was a flyer for uh, 50K run by Keystone Trails Association, KTA mm -hmm. 50K. And it said like very hiker friendly, 12 hour limit. And I had read, um, I was reading the book Wild uh, nice. by Cheryl Strait. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and she hikes the entire Pacific Crest Trail and kind of has issues and everything. I've got issues. And I'm like, that's so me. And then I yeah. read this thing and I'm like running and I'm like, well, I could do that in the woods. I got yeah. 12 hours. I can do anything in 12 hours. Like there's yeah. plenty of time. I'll figure it out. Yeah. And so I decided to sign up for this race and I had only been running. Like at that point, <clears throat> when I signed up for it, I had been running for about, um, a year, right about a year when I signed up, mm -hmm. like I'm going to do a 50 K. Well, around that time, I also signed up for a half marathon, garden spot, half marathons, road, half marathon, Clint spring. And not too far ahead of that half marathon. I saw another flyer for iron masters, 50 K, which was also in the spring. I'm like, uh -huh. well, that's kind of just like KTA only it's sooner. And that right. sounds even more fun. Right. So I'm going to run my first half marathon and then two weeks later, run my first 50 K. That Love makes it. sense, right? Love it. <laughs> so my longest hike ever was 14 miles. My longest run was that half marathon, the garden spot half marathon. And two weeks later, I did my first 50 K. And <laughs> yeah. And that year I was kind of signed up for a couple of things. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. So I did a triathlon and a Spartan and, and all that stuff. And I, I, I found myself in, I was in training for Harrisburg marathon and, um, doing really good with my training. And then, <clears throat> and, and during the week I would train on the rail trail and I would say, okay, if I do really good with my training, I'm going to treat myself by going out to the trails, the real trails. Yeah. Right. And at one point I thought to myself, like, why don't I just do that all the time? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of training for these road marathons, right? why don't I just train on the trails and race mm -hmm. on the trails and never go back to road? And, and you know, I do the occasional road race and, and I, right. I race direct a road race and those are a lot of fun too. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I kind of just, I'm very comfortable in the woods. I love the woods from, from hiking so much. Um, and I really don't mind being a back of the pack runner and yeah. I like I'm I'm the one runner who doesn't go out too fast yeah <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> no problem going out really slow right. um so that's that's kind of how I made my way into trail running um but it, it comes from a hiking background so I think I think hikers tend to be um a little more focused on like well yeah you need to eat you know, they're, right. they're pretty comfortable with eating out there, tend to have good balance on the rocks and tend to, to not go too fast. You know, there, there's um, some people struggle to slow down on the trails, you know, and, um, and my weaknesses, of course, are the opposite. So, um, so I, I struggle to go fast. <laughs> I just don't like it. It's not I'm with, I am with you a hundred percent. Yeah. And, um, and, and to have that competitive drive. I, I remember running with a friend and, and somebody passed me and, and I could feel her moving faster. And I looked at her, I'm like, I am not passing her back. I'm fine yeah. right where I am. Right, right. <laughs> um, so, so it's a, a cool background to come from because it comes with certain strengths and weaknesses like absolutely totally. everybody has. And, uh, and I just, I love the sport. It gives me something to do to, 
take my mind off of off of work um yeah and brings me to all kinds of great people I, I will say the other thing that uh, I started out running by myself <clears throat> and I've, I've told this story to people it's terrible I started out running by myself and I remember years ago I I weighed probably 50 pounds less than this I was I lost a bunch of weight for my wedding and uh, I remember my wedding, it was pretty small. I don't have any family here. I'm originally from Michigan. And uh, when it came to my, my friends list, I didn't have anybody to invite except people I worked with. I really didn't have any friends. Right. And so um, after the wedding, I quit smoking. Um, and in the process of quitting smoking, gained a bunch of weight and then wanted to lose it again. But I, I remember setting a goal for myself one year. I kind of got into running and and everything, but I did it all by myself. I did all these races by myself. And then I, with my headphones on and, you know, I'm yeah. in my own zone. And I set a goal for myself one year that I was going to make a friend. Mm. It's Love terrible, it. right? No, I I've done that friends. before. <laughs> I didn't have any friends. And, yeah. and which is surprising because people, oh, you're such an extrovert. Like, but that's, that's all a facade, right? Yeah. I'm comfortable talking in public, which is different than being, um, good at friendships and and I'm just not good at them and 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 so I I was on a mission to find a friend and I joined a Facebook running group um and that's where I made all of my trail running friends now and they uh, just brought so much light and happiness to my life and and I couldn't be happier so I love that what group was that that you joined online that was um moms run this town which love is it. primarily road runners yeah um and then at some point, at some point, I almost like I was kind of dominating our local group. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we were only posting trail races because our yeah. local group just it's not super active. Uh -huh. And um, a friend of mine, Sarah Hodder, she's down in uh, West Virginia. If you ever get a chance to go down there, she's she race directs a couple of awesome races, um, co race directs the Miners Lady and also works at Two Rivers Treads. Awesome. Awesome trail running store down there. And uh, she invited me to her trail sisters group, Facebook group. And I'm like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> and how do I sign up? Yeah. And she's like, oh, if you need a local one, you know, you just reach out to Gina and, and so on. And I was like, this is awesome. So <laughs> like, I created this local group. So we kind of, all of those people shifted, <laughs> mm. shifted over. But it, it started with moms around this town. Um, and then that kind of migrated over to Trail Sisters and okay. um, it's Trail Sisters York PA, but it really covers South Central Pennsylvania because there's a lot of female runners from out to Gettysburg and out to Lidditz and Lancaster, um, up to Carlisle, Harrisburg, who all run together and we all kind of know each other. Yeah. Like I, I live in York County, but I work in Lancaster County. So I, okay. I cross counties for work and a lot of people around here do. So uh, the members kind of cross all of those areas, which is pretty awesome. Very cool. Well, okay. I have so many questions, but the first one I'll ask, and I love asking this because this is like, it's a very common, you have a very common story. I, I have the same one. I started as a road runner and then you find the trails and you never go back. But I love asking the question, like, what was it that made you want to stick with the trails you know was it I won't make suggestions I'll just ask you a question what, what was it that, <laughs> I won't answer it for you what was it that made you uh kind of you know fall in love with it and not go back to the road scene yeah um I, I definitely enjoy it more I mean with with road your goal is just to be faster and I'm I'm yeah. just I don't I'm not really interested in being faster that's yeah. terrible I, yeah, hey, I'm I just with don't you. care about my pace. Yeah. Um, not that I don't care, you know, but it, it just is not a priority. Yeah. And I love being out in the woods. I enjoy it. I find it meditative. Uh, when I'm staring at my feet, I can't think about anything else, which means I'm 100% in the moment. Yeah. And, um, and that's such a great feeling. And it's such a, a big stress reliever for me. I'm a former workaholic. Mm. <laughs> and have been known to pull some some all-nighters and some um some some pretty bad work weeks yeah. uh and finding that meditation and and that space 
uh, really helped pull me out of that. And, and um, I'm really thankful for that. And my husband's thankful for it too, because I'm yeah. a happier person. Um, but, but being in the woods is uh, just, I find so much joy in that. And you, tonight I was looking out at a beautiful sunset over the Susquehanna River. Oh. And I just can't beat it. You can't, you can't, it's the trail, the trail beauty, right? You just see so many things that you don't, you don't necessarily would see on the road. You know? Now, how are you going to answer that? You know, I, my, my answer is usually it's the community. That's what attracted oh, me most, okay. attracted me most to the trails. Like my first, mm -hmm. the first trail race that I did, I remember just people talking to me and I was thinking like, why are you talking to me? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Because my only experience up until that point had been a very large road half marathon where everybody's just in the zone. They have their headphones on. I, I went by myself. You know, I didn't talk to anybody. And then yeah. the first the first trail race I did, I ended up running with a woman for almost 20 miles. It was a 50K. And I was like, holy cow, I know more about this woman than some of my closest friends just for running together for 20 miles, you know? Yeah. So that's what attracted me to the trails. But. I definitely saw that pretty early on, but I wasn't sure if it was just an anomaly with just those couple of people I saw. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I didn't, I didn't stick around for the after party at the time. In the beginning, I didn't really discover the trail community, I think, until later on. And then I discovered right. it. And I was like, hey, these people are amazing. And this ride right. is so cool. And, right. and, uh, and everybody's kind of... I think, I think people have their own reasons for coming to trail, but, um, everybody is just really welcoming and inclusive. Yeah. And, and I think that's a, a cool thing. And we talk about it all the time in, in <clears throat> kind of our local group, because we all have very different jobs, very different backgrounds, yeah. you know, different religious beliefs and political beliefs. And, and like, none of that matters out of the trail. It's, yeah. we love the trail. Right. And then it's this thing that we all have in common. Totally. And, um, and that's so cool. Yeah. It's that common, common ground, safe space, I think, that can bridge a lot of gaps between people groups. So, um, okay. I want to talk about, can we talk about Trail Sisters? Because I think maybe some folks might not be familiar with the group, but I am such a big fan of Gina and all she's done for our sport. So, I would love for you to maybe you could do a little background on Trail Sisters and then you can dump as much love on your own group as you want to. And, you know, maybe people are listening like, oh, I'm in Pennsylvania. How can I get involved? Like you can share that info as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I will definitely um, begin by shouting out the other Pennsylvania Trail Sisters groups. Um, so we have uh, back um, over on uh uh, the Pittsburgh side. She runs Trail Sisters Pittsburgh. And I just missed, I was at, I was crewing at Yeti and so was she. And we just passed each other. It was so oh, fun. fun. Yeah. And Nicole Werner is at Trail Sisters Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And so the three of us um, coordinate really well. And it's so much fun to work with these other women. I think there's one or two up for, further north and I just don't I don't know those those women as well um but the group leaders from uh Philadelphia and Pittsburgh are just awesome and I'm kind of sandwiched in between uh with our group uh yeah. we've been around um I think a year and a half so okay. still a fairly new group Trail Sisters is now international so they're across oh um, across I didn't realize into, that. yeah into other countries and okay. And um, there is an Apple app. I keep waiting for the Android one. The Android one isn't out yet, but oh. uh, Trail Sisters, <laughs> and I think it's trailsisters.net, um, okay. but there's Trail Sisters communities and you can go out there and find your local community and there's other communities. The blogs are phenomenal. There's really yeah. great articles out there about just about everything. And it does cover trail running, hiking, and backpacking. Um, so not oh, just, trail I'm learning running. a lot right now. I'm learning a lot right now. Yeah. Which is really awesome because I think, um, within trail running, we're seeing a lot more of that. I know for myself personally, I've been kind of like squirreling away a couple of things here and there to prepare. I want to do my first backpacking trip. I haven't done it yet. I want to get into fast packing more. I think it's a really cool sport. And of right. course I love hiking already. Yeah. So um, it's more about a passion for trails. Um, and uh, the focus for Trail Sisters is to empower and educate and build a community for women around trail running. 
um, because there's a lot of resources already out there for men um, yeah. and women have a couple of different complexities. Um, and men, if you got complexities out there, man, you make your group and talk all about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but for women, there are different things to consider. Like, what do you do when you're backpacking on your period? How do you yeah. manage that? Right. And it's great to have a group to bounce ideas off of and solutions off of and, and say, well, what do you do when you have to pee in the woods and you're on your period? Like, how do you, how do you deal with that? Right. What do you do when you need, um, when you're breastfeeding and you're trying to run a hundred miles, yeah. how do you manage that? Right. And that's just something that I'm sorry, man, you don't have, <laughs> like men just don't have to deal with that. And, um, and, and it can be uncomfortable to talk about things, those types of things in, in a co-ed situation. So right. also plenty of co-ed groups, um, that I love the idiot running group, um, uh, in particular, I, I love, which is real, which is co-ed. Um, but Trail Sisters is just a dip and that's the cool thing about the internet. It's like you can be a hundred percent into the Sasquatch Trail Runners and the Yeti Trail Runners. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? And Trail Sisters. Like you don't have right. to pick one. We're right. not in competition with each other. Totally. So, so you you can be in all of them. Um, right. So uh, Trail Sisters is out there to educate and empower and create a community and. And um, I'm really passionate about, in particular, getting women comfortable on the trails and comfortable mm -hmm. alone on the trails. Mm -hmm. um, and then pushing, uh, not pushing women, but encouraging women to reach their goals. And if their goal is, I just want to go out there and hike every weekend. Yeah. Awesome. Let's get you there. Right. I want to be able to hike alone. Let's get you there. Right. I want to complete a hundred miler. Let's get you there. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that one of the biggest barriers, uh, for women getting into that kind of, uh, post 50 miler distance into the hundred K hundred mile, 200 mile, um, is not having as many resources and being more unsure about the path to get there. Yeah. I think there's some assumptions about what it, you know, what it takes, um, away from family and other commitments and, and yes, but maybe not as much as you think. Um, you know, yeah. I, I just coached somebody to her second hundred miler and she's got three kids um, mm -hmm. and spends plenty of time with them and a full-time job. Right. And, and so it's helping women get to that goal. I, and it's, it's really, when you really dig into the data, there's not a lot of women out there going at, at, at those big distances. And I don't, I think for some women, you know, they just, don't want to, and that's fine. But I think some people want to and just can't see a path to get there. And I think Trail Sisters is a great resource to help them get there and to see, oh, that's possible. Um, yeah. Western States is a great example where people say, oh, you know, 50% or I forget what it was, 40% of the top 20 were women. Yeah. That's great. Guess what the total participation rate yeah. was, however. Right. It was still, I think, 11% uh, mm. was female which means female back of the pack runners. It's only yeah. elites. Yeah. It's only elites who are signing up for Western States. Right. It's not your back of the pack female runners because they're back of the pack middle of the pack are saying, that's not for me. And I wanna be like, oh yeah, that is for you. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to train differently. You're gonna have to do things a little bit differently, but you can absolutely accomplish that if you want to. If you don't want to, you know, that I don't, people have their own goals and there's nothing wrong with that you know you choose whatever goal. like I don't want to run faster plenty of people do right <laughs> I I don't want to boss the qualifying time I've never done a sub two hour marathon half marathon I have no desire right right <laughs> so we all have different goals um but I think trail sisters um helps bring some reality to some of those in particular ultra running goals um, you know, ultra running, which I think is a big challenge. And then being out on the trails by yourself, how do you do that and, and, um, feel safe about it and make your family feel safe. And, and, um, I see that as, as one of the biggest benefits. And then they're, they're, um, a big, uh, advocate for women, you know, Gina goes on podcasts and, mm. and talks about the challenges of women in trail and, and tries to educate men too on yeah. here's here's things you shouldn't say, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, 
you know, some of it is we can look at all of the different reasons why. And, mm -hmm. and um, there's lots of, of different ones, but, um, but trying to, to bring equality to the sport and, and bring, um, there's uh, Trail Sisters sponsored races, for example. So a race can get Trail Sisters sponsored. And one of the things that it requires is if, if there's a cash prize, for example, it's gotta be equal yeah. for men and women. And, and um, if you have aid stations, then yeah, you got to have feminine products. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went through all that for Good. All, Sasquads all trail sister approved. I love it. I love it so much. And I've, I've yeah. had comments from women at the races like, oh my gosh, there's tampons in the first aid kit. That's so good. Yeah. You know? That's great. And it's, it's some of those things where um, I love meeting other female race directors, for example. And um, there's still a fairly male dominated race directors. And, and it's something that if, if uh, a guy had a special need, I probably wouldn't think of it either. But once you tell the male race directors, you should probably have tampons. And then they're like, oh yeah, sure. I'll, be, I'll bring tampons. But they just don't right. think of it. Right. And, and so isn't that great to have this safe group that's not trying to be preachy, you know, but, but yeah. just bring some more education and equality around the sport. And um, so the Trail Sisters is a whole lot of stuff. Um, the community aspect is probably what most people like about it. Mm -hmm. All of the groups run um, group runs. Um, we have group runs, we have group hikes, and it's no person left behind. So we all go at the same pace. Um, we don't break out into different groups and everybody goes their own pace. Like we all stay together. And, right. um, and it might be a small group of us, maybe three of us. Right. Um, but there's there's just such cool conversation that that comes along with it. So I think that's um, probably the biggest thing that that women, and by all means, I join in co-ed trail runs too, but it's different conversations when you yeah. have that female only um, trail run. And, and um, I really enjoy that space to just talk a little differently than you might when you're with the dudes. And with when I'm with the dudes, I, I'm like, hold on, I got to walk. Like, <laughs> please slow down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um and and with the women um I don't know it's just not as hard to to tell them like hey I'm ready to walk now and yeah. and everybody else is like finally okay great let's walk yeah <laughs> but it's 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 a little bit easier I think totally well that you know what that's a great segue into because I would love to chat with you about uh back of the pack because I I am proud middle of back of the packer myself um so I'd love for you to chat a little bit about it. I know you said you, you love talking about it. So let's let's dive into that. Yeah, I, I love being um, a back and pack runner. And I will say it's all relative, right? Mm -hmm. If I go to one race, will I be um, middle of the pack or front of the pack? Sure, I might. Um, but I, I in, in general, I'm not typically going to be at the front of the pack. And, and I keep trying to work on that stuff. And, and Eric that kicks my ass and it's, it's definitely <laughs> making me faster, but, um, but there are different things that, that you think about in the back of the pack. And I think it's really easy to get sucked into, um, suggestions from people out on Facebook who are one male and two, a heck of a lot faster. Sure. And they say, Oh, you don't really need to bring, um, you don't really need a hydration vest for X race, for example. Oh, the aid stations are close enough together. And I see that kind of stuff. And I'm like, Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's not make that suggestion for everybody because for some people, absolutely. You should have a hydration bladder. You, yeah. you yeah. should have one because right. for one person, it's going to take them 45 minutes to get from aid station, to aid station for another person. It's going to take two hours. Yeah. And in two hours time on a hot day, water bottles, not enough. Right. You know, I need totally. a hydration pack for that. I need a bladder. I need two bottles. Um, there's a big difference in a 50 K, you know, 50 Ks that I run, um, the winner is coming in in four 30. And mm -hmm. I'm coming in in eight hours, you right. know, and that's a big, big difference between 4.30 and eight hours. I need to hydrate differently. I need to eat differently. I need to have more walk breaks. I'm probably not going to run the entire thing and that's fine. And, and I think like any pace is fine, right? right. 
there's something to be said for choosing the right race for you, which I haven't always done. And I have quite a few DNFs behind me. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the DNF. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the DNF. But don't enter a race just because you want to convince somebody else to enter one. I will say that. The lesson mm-hmm. learned. But um, there's something to be said for choosing a race wisely. Um, that is doable. Still nothing wrong with a DNF, but um, if you're going to set yourself up for failure, know that that's, <laughs> that that's a good possibility. <laughs> know what you're getting yourself into. Uh-huh. Um, it's hydrating differently. It's eating differently. And, and it's not following the same race plan as somebody else. It's right. not necessarily following the same training plan as somebody yeah. else. Right. Where somebody else is going to be at 100 mile weeks. And some of the folks who I coach, um, you know, they might be training for a hundred miler and they never go past, uh, uh, you know, they peak out at a 55 mile. Week. Right. And, and, and they still finish. Right. Mm. So, um, it's, it's, um, a different place to be. And, and I think the other thing is, is not letting those things get in your way. You know, I know plenty of back of pack runners who are just like, I could never do a 50 K. I would love to, but I can't do it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about finding a 50 K that works for you. Right. What would training look like? And is that doable for you? Um, and then let's put together a great nutrition strategy and a great hydration strategy and a good mental game. And you'll be fine. Right. Now, if you don't want to, again, you don't have to, but if that's your goal and, and you've, you've got a different pace, you can still get your goal. Totally. <laughs> you know? Um, I've, I've got, uh, an athlete I'm working with who's just phenomenal to work with, man, she's kicking ass and her average pace is going to be somewhere around 15, 16 minute mile. Yeah. She can get to a 50 K. Right. Now we do different things with her training. She's only running four or five days a week. She's not running six, seven days a week. You know, yeah, there's, yeah. there's something to be said for, for ramping up. Right. Um, and then, uh, also, it's a totally different race strategy. Whereas I remember um, hearing all these stories about Georgia Death Race, right? And you run Georgia Death Race, and oh, I ran it, and I took a twenty-minute nap during it, and blah 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 blah. If you're a bag of pack runner, you have time for naps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true, <laughs> right? And and so it's a totally different race strategy, like. You, depending on the race, some races, the cutoffs, you know, you got plenty of time, but there's okay. some races where I tell my athletes, don't fuck around at the aid stations. You get yourself in, you grab your shit and you start eating it on your way out. Mm. You don't have time at that aid station. Right, Otherwise you're right. not, cause that stuff adds up. You doing a 50 miler and you got a 12 hour cutoff. I mean, for some people, they may say, oh, that's a piece of cake. I can take a nap. And for other people, um, that's, that's very intimidating. Mm. And just because it's intimidating doesn't mean it's not doable, Yeah, but you're going to have to have a different strategy is all. Right. Totally. You know? So I think it's, it's go for the big, huge goal. Understand that you're going to get to that big goal on a different pathway than an elite runner, but right. how you get there, I mean, who cares? Right. <laughs> At least it hits your goal. Um, so I, I think, I think personally, there's not enough discussion about if you are a back of the pack runner, how do you get to those big goals Mm -hmm. Um, rather than, oh, that's just not for me. I can't, I can't do that because I'm a back of the pack runner. Well, it's, eh, these things are negotiable. (laughs) Yeah. Do you think there's a perception from back of the pack runners about like, well, I'm, I'm slow. Um, I can't do this. I don't even want to get a coach. Like, do you, do you think that's a perception with, cause you're a coach. So you've had that experience. Like that's kind of my perception. I've heard from people like, well, I'm never going to get a coach. I'm not really serious. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I hear, um, I'm not a serious runner and I'm not a fast runner. Um, so I don't need a coach <laughs> and, and, oh man, that, that those things just, are so far from the truth, right? Um, Because a coach can help say, it's more about, do you have goals that you want to hit? And is it something that you can afford, right? Right. Because coaching is an an investment, but if you have big goals 
and uh, you really want to hit those goals. And there are coaches out there like me who are pretty affordable. <laughs> right. And, and you can, you can put in that investment and then that coach is really going to help guide and steer you into not overtraining, <laughs> sure. not getting yeah. injured. <laughs> and then hitting your goal. And more often than not, I think with those um, runners who are either A, backpack runners, or B, beginners, um, could, I would argue, need potentially need a coach more just mm -hmm. because that coach can, can help guide you away from injury. And that's usually what takes people out. Um, and it's, it's overuse injury, right? So it's going too hard too soon. And that coach is going to say like, mm -mm, no, you're not doing that. <laughs> I just right. to had somebody who had a back strain. It's like, guess what? You're going to take a couple weeks off and we're going to do some. And so what do you do with that time then? Mm -hmm. What are some smart things that you can do? And that's where your coach comes in and says, well, here's what you should do. And, um, and you know, by all means, no coach is going to, diagnose or treat or anything like that. But um, after that diagnosis, say, okay, well, here's what we can do with that. Here's how we can keep you on the right track. And ultimately, if you got those big goals and these big goals, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, like, they're just fun. It's just fun to, to push yourself and find out what you're capable of, you know, am I capable of running a hundred miles? Right. And, and it's cool to figure that out. <laughs> totally. And, um, and sometimes you need somebody along the way just to bounce ideas off of, you know, I, I love mm -hmm. chatting with my athletes all the time, uh, just because I love this topic anyway. I love the topic of trail running and the, hey, what right. do you think about this? And what do you think about that? And I just tried out this, this new hydration and oh, shit, I'm going to try it out too. So I learned just as much from that, which I right. really love. Right. And, um, and so you have this person who's like obligated to talk to you about trail running. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you just want some ideas, you know, you got somebody obligated to, to help you with that. And I think there's probably um, not enough discussion about race strategy. I, one of my athletes, mm. she, she, she tells me all the time, she's like, you should have workshops about race planning. Mm. Um, and I do help a couple other people um, who I don't coach with race planning. And yeah. especially those back of the pack runners, like, putting, there are some people who can show up at a 50 miler and never done trail running in their lives and they can finish 50 miler. That's not most people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my thing, when I send my athletes into a race is like, I want you to finish the race, but I want you to feel amazing at the finish. Yeah. I don't want you to feel like that. Right. And I want you to not be injured. So right. having a coach is going to help you get to the finish line without being injured and without feeling like death and getting back into running again, because right. that's the whole point is that you enjoy the running and then the race is just the bonus. Yeah. And, um, and I think that a coach is also hopefully a good coach going to help you formulate a great race strategy, um, which for me, I, there's, it depends on the race, but for the really, really big stuff, there's a nutrition hydration strategy there's a pacing strategy and then there's a mental strategy and mm -hmm. having that person sit down with you and really plan out, okay, what are you going to do at mile 50 when you feel like quitting? What's your plan? Right. And, and it's things that you might not think of like, Oh, shit, I didn't even think about that. What am I going to do? What am I going to say? And that, that coach is going to help you put that together because, you know, too many times if you're, if you're, training on your own, you know, you train for something for six months, three months, a year, whatever that is. And then you go into race day and you're like, shit, here's all these things I didn't even think of. Yeah. And then the race isn't as good as you, as you had hoped. Um, whereas I think um, people who leverage a coach can really put together a great race strategy. And I think also with the, with the training, I, I push I, I've mentioned it a million times already, but I push nutrition so hard because it is so important and is especially important for females and is especially important for back and back runners. Yeah. And thought to figure it out. And, and um, like running fast, it is a terrible idea for us. And, <laughs> and so um, that gets put into the training plan, right? Mm -hmm. So 
this day, here's what I want you to do for your nutrition. And, and the next day, here's what's going to happen with it. I want you to start working on this. And that training for training your gut is just as important, especially uh, one of my athletes who did her first um, hundred miler um, down in Damascus. Um, she had, you know, midway through it, she'd finished about her hundred K and she was eating a turkey sandwich. And I, I wasn't there. I was FaceTiming her and she's like, this really is um, just an eating contest with right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. It, 100 it mile eating is. contest. Yeah. It's a 100 mile eating contest. And she felt awesome. And mm -hmm. other people felt like death. I'm like, you know why? Because we pushed your nutrition. And I think, yeah. I think a coach will help put those things into perspective, you know, where, whereas you might kind of, you're kind of feeling yourself around and, and I know for myself, like, I know I need to do more speed work. If I'm left to my own devices, I'm going to do speed work once a month, but yeah. I have a coach <laughs> and right. he makes me do speed work every week. <laughs> right. And, and like that, that's, he knows what I need. I know it too, but just because he told me to do it now, I'm going to do it and right. I'm push myself harder than if I didn't have a coach. And like my coach has a coach, say it. Right. You know, and, and so the, it's cool. I think the greatest coaches also have coaches because they totally. see the value in it, you know? Totally, totally. Well, Hey, we've got a question in the uh, live chat. So let me read it to you. This is from uh, my good friend, Kaylin Hopkins. Hello. What strategy do you have for runners who are constantly apologizing for their pace? Even the fastest groups of runners have people towards the back. That's a great question. I love this one. Yeah. Um, I got a great um, tip from a friend of mine, Amy Whitmore. Oh, she is amazing. <laughs> Love Amy. And um, she is typically faster than me. She's coming back from injury. I'm, I might be able to beat her right now. I doubt it. But, <laughs> but I, was, I was running with Amy. I was running with Amy and it, it totally, it depends on the group that you're in. I'm right. going to be the fastest in one group. I'm going to be the slowest in another group. That's always the case. But I was running with her on the Appalachian Trail because the AT isn't too far away from us. And we're going up this climb. And I really had this blowdown. I mean, these women I, I was with, they were they were some some strong runners and they were at the top waiting for me. Right. And um, and I just started apologizing. And she said, she said to me, you know, when I'm in a group of faster runners and I am the last one to the top, I always uh, tell people you're welcome. <laughs> Yes. you're welcome for the break right yes <laughs> so you get the you're welcome <laughs> you're welcome for that break that I just gave you wasn't that nice and and um and that is just a, a flip of the mindset right and I think on the other side of it as a runner one of the things that I try to do is um to let people feel more comfortable it's like sure I I could run faster um, one, I don't want to, and if I wanted to, I wouldn't have scheduled a group run, right? At, at the end yeah. of the day, if this were a speed session for me, I'm not going to schedule a group run. It's not right. a speed session. Right. I'm out here for time on feet. I right. would rather spend it with you. Right. So, so please let's do this together. And, um, you know, I, I have several folks in my group, um, Jill Wentz, who's just, oh, I love her. She's the biggest heart <laughs> in the entire world. Um, she goes on group runs she's super fast. And I think there's some people who don't even know that because she loves to hang in the back and she just right. kind of tracks along and hangs in the back with everybody else. Um, so there's something to be said for if you're in group runs, you don't necessarily have to go the speed that you can go, go with, you, you might run in the back and then run in the middle right. and run in the front and um, kind of switch up that spot. So when I'm leading group runs, I tend to, I tend to be in the front um, but if people know where they're going, I might move around within that pack and just go at, at different speeds. Right. It's fun to go at different speeds and, and, um, and to hike more and work on my hiking pace. Right. Um, when I'm, when I'm with somebody, I just did a 5k with my sister. It was her first 5k. We did it. Oh, at Woodstock. fun. Yeah. Um, Woodstock is in Michigan. That is a load of fun, by the way. Awesome. We're doing our first 5k and she walked the whole thing. And I trotted along with her and I said, 
I'm sorry, I have to run because your walking pace is so fast. <laughs> and it's true. Like her legs are longer than mine and she's a fucking power walker. And, yeah, and I had to apologize for, for running. And, and that just kind of flips everything around, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I have to run because you're such a fast walker. I wish I were a faster walker. I'm trying right. to work, work on, and I, it's true. I'm trying to work on my walking pace. Um, but I think it, when you're at the back of the pack, a fun thing to say is like, you're welcome for that walking break yes. <laughs> or you're welcome for that little rest that you just got. Totally. <laughs> and to, to, to know that the people at the front, um, a lot of them used to be in the back. Um, and if they wanted to do it as a speed session, then they probably shouldn't have showed up. Right. Yeah. And I would say too, like, you know, we're probably more self-conscious of what other people are going to say and make assumptions about what they're going to say too. And you know what, at the end of the day, if they have a problem with it, then that's not even a group run you want to be a part of. Right. Like, absolutely. So. <laughs> and I, like, I can't think of a group run, honestly, where, um, somebody in the back needed to go at a slower pace. So we all slowed down and I can't ever remember somebody complaining about that. Never. Right. The exactly. only thing that I've ever heard is that is so awesome that our group all sticks together because there are mm -hmm. other groups in the area, non-trail sisters groups um, that don't do that. And, mm -hmm. and they just love it so much. And that's why they keep coming back. And, and that, that person in the back, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I answered the question. You did. You did. There we go. That's it was good. One. It was good. Um, okay. I want to slip in one more question here. This will probably be our last little rabbit hole for tonight, but I, I did want to make sure we talked about it um, because I've been so encouraged by it. You know, uh, you're pretty vocal on social media. And one of my favorite groups is the ladies tour group, the trail and ultra. Uh, Cause I, can't stand the other one that has that's just the trail yeah. and ultra I know yeah. I'm not the only one but uh the ladies yeah. group is so great so helpful like you can ask a question and you're gonna get you know not sarcastic responses back um but you are are consistently commenting on posts with very positive messages and one of those reoccurring themes is is pod, positive body image and so mm. I would love to chat about that. Um, I, so you were on a podcast with the trails collective with um, Ian golden leads that. Um, and that was one of the, I'm not sure if that was a full topic or it was just a, a conversation amidst the interview, but you spent a lot of time talking about body image and um, I was so encouraged by it. I know that, you know, I see a lot of times questions come up on those Facebook groups, whether it's about like, I want to wear these shorts, but I don't like the way they look. And then I'm always like, wait, five, four, three. Okay. Grace is going to comment right here. <laughs> right. I love it. I love the positive message that you're spreading. So we'd love to chat about that to wrap up our time together. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, and I got a battery low indicator and I can't find my charger ever since Yeti. <sighs> But I think I'm good. I think I'm good for a little bit. I'm just All warning right. you. Well, if you, if you disappear, but, we'll know why. Yeah, you'll know why. <laughs> So um, I love this topic. Thank you. Um, I'm really passionate about it. And I did do a, a pretty extensive post um, toward the end of the summer on the, the ultra running ladies group, um, because I see so many of these posts where people, there'll be a comment about like, hey, does anybody have suggestions for shorts? And then the response is like, oh, my legs are too fat for that. I have too much chub rub. Um, and it's, it's so much of this, um, I can't wear short shorts like that because um, my legs are, are too gross. I've even seen. Yeah. Um, and, and it just like hurts my heart. Yeah. So um, to kind of go back, I spent 35 years of my life in pants and long skirts. Um, now, because I have any problem with what anybody else wears, I just thought it was not appropriate for me because my legs are very large, probably a medium up here from the hips down, I am an extra large. I've got 27 inch thighs. <laughs> um, I have a very large rear end. It's, um, it's excessive. I love it. Now I do. Yeah. Um, but I, um, even through high school, I remember going to Cedar Point and I wore pants in 95 mm -hmm. because I was so uncomfortable in shorts because my legs are so big and I wouldn't sit down with my legs 
fully compressed on seats. I would put my toes up um, so that my legs wouldn't spread out. Um, and, and I was very self-conscious about it. It was interesting though, because I was also uh, growing up, my sport was not running at all. I was not in any sports, I was a dancer. And so I spent a lot of time in leotards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was kind of comfortable um, in one context, um, but everywhere else, very self-conscious about how large my legs are yeah. um, in my head, right? And um, I got into running, I wore capris and I wore pants. And then I did a triathlon. And because of that, like I had to wear shorts because of the bike shorts and everything. And I ended up getting these um, pair of shorts that I could swim in. And uh, they were a little bit shorter. I was very self-conscious about it. And I ran a relay race. I ran Ragnar uh, Poconos. And I was wearing these shorts for the first time ever in public. And it was very, very hot that day. So I felt like, all right, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to wear the shorts. And it right. was one of those pivotal moments where like, if somebody makes a comment one way or the other, like, this is, this is going to change things. Yeah. Right. And I didn't know that at the time. Um, but I was running uh, on the road, tiny little shorts and tiny shorts. And for me, like, shorts that would be mid thigh for somebody else are like up my crack because my butt's so big. <laughs> yeah. It just makes shorts even, it's emphasized. And so this woman leans out of her van because in a Ragnar, you know, it's a relay race and there's vans of people and they kind of pass by and they cheer on other runners. Yeah. And this woman leans out of the van and she goes, woo, hot pants. Hot pants. Hot pants. <laughs> And she was not being um, offensive at all. She was trying to encourage me. It was, it was said in such a positive way. And, yeah. and th that moment just clicked for me. I was like, I, I guess it's okay for me to wear shorts when it's 95 mm. degrees and I'm running. I guess that's okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and so I started wearing shorts occasionally. And yeah. then I discovered that my legs are amazing. I had no idea for 35. And yeah. by the way, it's way fucking more comfortable to wear a yeah. short for right. me. Right. If you're uncomfortable in them, right. That's not you. It's, it's all good. And also I don't chafe. Turns out I yeah. have very little salt in my sweat. Um, so I wear tiny little short shorts. Um, very, very short. They're super fun. <laughs> and I'm, this is what I'm comfortable in. And yeah. I often don't wear a shirt um, either. I do wear a sports bra. <laughs> and that's so good. I have a sports bra and tiny little shorts. And that's what I run in. And right. I, I have um, lots of jiggling habits. Like there's a lot of movement. And, and that's just, I'm comfortable because I'm, I'm not as hot. I get to use my natural cooling sweat mechanism. Yeah. And I don't chafe a lot. Um, yeah. So what I hate seeing is, I can't wear shorts because my fat legs will make me chafe, mm. right? Salt in your sweat makes you chafe. Mm. Stop calling them your fat legs. Um, and part of what I hate about this is like, okay, let's say for me, I'm 100 and right around 170, 175 pounds. If I call my legs fat, and then there's somebody else who's much bigger, than, like my sister is 194 pounds, right? Mm -hmm. She's working on weight loss right now because um, that's what's comfortable for her. I don't encourage weight loss for everybody. That's what she's working on for some health reasons. And uh, she's 195 pounds. So if I call my legs fat, what does that say about her, mm -hmm. right? So now I am, I'm actually calling her fat now. Mm -hmm. And I, if I say my legs are disgusting, I'm also saying that her legs are disgusting yeah. and I don't like, I, that's not, and I don't think people mean that, but right. when we talk negatively about ourselves, we're also saying something about somebody else. Yeah. And, and that negative self-talk, like, what does that do for ourselves? Right. We're not, we're not benefiting ourselves at all right. by right. saying by saying those things like I'm so disgusting, I'm so gross, I'm so whatever, we're not helping us reach our goals unless right. our goal is to feel like shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. and for most people, that's not their goal. And so the first step is to let's talk differently about ourselves. And um, we have legs, which is amazing. Not everybody has legs, by the way. Yeah. And, and so if we've got legs that make us, that help us move, 
like, isn't that an incredible thing? And let's love those legs. Yeah. Whatever they look like. Little skinny legs, big legs, somewhere in between. Yeah. And if you want to wear pants, wear pants. You want to wear a skirt, wear a skirt. You want tiny little shorts, wear tiny little shorts. Mm. And and so I don't like the conversation about something like chafing, which there are solutions for, getting mixed in together with this really um, harmful self-talk. Mm. Uh, and so I, I really like to talk about, okay, let's talk about what helps you be comfortable running, um, yeah. which could be wearing a shirt or not wearing a shirt. And I remember first time I ran without a shirt, like I took off my shirt, I put it back on, I took it off, <laughs> I, it back on. I like finally took it off. And then I ran and I was like, nobody cared. Yeah. Nobody cared. Nobody but cares. Like, nobody cares. Yeah. And, and everybody's just, self-conscious about themselves you know mm -hmm. <laughs> totally totally I, you know for the most part people are not judging you right and and the couple of people who are eh, you know that's on them and right. so um yes I'm really passionate about body positivity and especially about negative self-talk because it doesn't benefit us and it also doesn't benefit the other women out there and, yeah. and I really think that we've got to be more mindful of that and mindful of like, how do I lift up those around me? Mm. And part of lifting up those around me is lifting up myself too yeah. and, and talking great about myself. One of the things that I like to tell my friends when they start talking negative about themselves and, oh my God, I'm so slow and I'm so terrible. And this to say, stop talking about my friend like that. Yeah. Stop talking about my friend like that because I love her. She's mm. awesome. And stop telling her that she's slow. Yeah. It's not nice. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I love and that. So, great. <laughs> so, um, that, that body positivity, I, I like to see all shapes and all the shapes and sizes out there. I like to see the tall people and short people and everybody in between and all different colors. And let's all go out there and have some awesome food and tell some stories yeah. and um and that i think that i don't hear a lot of people talking poorly about others yeah. right that's usually not what happens like people right. aren't saying oh my god she's so fat she shouldn't be wearing that right most right. people don't do that it's right. oh my god i'm so fat i can't wear that and that's right. just as bad right? yeah. totally. <laughs> and, and totally it's just as harmful and so um i do a lot of preaching yep out on that group <laughs> because I'm, I'm hoping maybe, you know, some people are, I might be able to, to help them think a little bit differently, but it all comes because that's how I thought too. Right. And, um, I, like it turns out I'm far more comfortable when I'm running now. I wear short shorts as much as I can to encourage others in case they would be comfortable in the same way. And, um, and it just, um, hurts my heart. How many amazing people out there don't yeah. realize how amazing they are. Just like I didn't realize like, holy shit, my legs are literally, I've been stopped on the street. Like, because I, I I'll wear shorts in everyday life now too. Mm -hmm. I've never wore jean shorts before. And now I like, I have jean shorts and I wear them and like, girl, I got some amazing legs. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. And, hot pants. Hot pants. Hot pants. And which is my trail name now. My I was gonna ask you, is it your trail name? Hot it's pants. my trail name. Yeah. And and um and I like I love that. I love that I can represent the the um but, and I have had people stop. I had the woman stop me at the end of Algonquin. I did Algonquin 50k. She stopped me and she's like, I have to know how are you not chafed? Oh. <laughs> It's very obvious that my legs rub against each other. Like right. they do. I, I am so far from the thigh gap and I just don't, I don't, I do use lube, but I don't need a lot of it. I just don't mm. chafe that easily. I'm like really, really lucky. Although I will say that my feet smell terrible. So it's not, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's the trade-off. Like I have really okay. smelly feet. I just don't, um, you don't want to be around when I take off my shoes after a trail run, but I don't, I don't, know. <laughs> I don't, I don't shave that much. Um, so I appreciate you bringing that up because I am so passionate about it. And I would encourage everybody out there, men and women, right. right. Um, there's some men who, who, um, 
uh, need just as much encouragement to talk positively about themselves. Even if they're not saying it out loud, they might be saying it to themselves. Right. And, and please recognize like how amazing you all are. Most people are pretty amazing, right? I would say so for the most part, right? <laughs> Well, Grace, this has been phenomenal. The hour went so fast. I think that was the fastest interview that I've ever done. Like it's already after nine o'clock. So um, that means we'll probably just have to have you back on to have like a part two because we didn't get yeah. to cover barely anything really. Yeah, let's do it. We only went down a few rabbit holes, but this was so good. Um, why don't you share with folks um, how they can get involved with the Trail Sisters, your coaching services, um, those are probably the two, right? That yeah. You care about? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, oh, and your on... races, the races that you direct too, if they yeah. if want to get yeah. involved in that. Yeah. Trail sisters.net. Um, check them out. I am our, our local group is trail sisters, York PA, but again, we cover all of South central PA. Um, but any trail sisters group is, is just going to be an awesome group to join in. And, um, I race direct, uh, formerly the Dallas town wildcat 10 K fastest, first mile and slowest last mile in a 10k you will ever run okay <laughs> which is a part of the york road runners winter series it's a series of eight races uh, a lot a lot a lot of fun and uh, a really cool crowd um so that's the the one race that i get to race direct uh aside from little fat ass stuff that i do for fun uh, I am out on Facebook as Grace Langheim. Grace is spelled G-R-A-Y-C-E because my mom decided to be extra. And, <laughs> and I'm out on Instagram as running graceful. Grace spelled G-R-A-Y-C-E-F-U-L. So running graceful out on Instagram and Grace Langheim out on Facebook. And um, coaching. coaching. I, um, I don't have a website or anything. Okay. I'm so informal about it. I like, I love to talk to people um, directly and, um, and go through everything and have lots of communication. Got I it. like, I, I should probably do a website someday. Eh, eventually. But um, hotpants.com. Look, right. <laughs> look, <laughs> look for me at races and tiny little shorts um, and big thighs and, and that'll be me. Awesome. Well, Grace, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. This has been really fun. Um, guys, thank you for tuning in to the interview. If you're watching live or if you're catching the recap on our podcast, we appreciate you. And uh, you can learn more about Sasquatch Trail Running. Go to sasquatchtrailrunning.com. We are on Facebook and Instagram. Every run is a trail party as always. So uh, until we see you again, keep it squatchy. Yeah.